Good afternoon. Today is July the 8th, I believe. I think so. Yes, July the 8th. It is uh, right at uh, 5 p.m. on our bi-weekly Sunday sit-down. Let's see if anybody joins in. Let's see. Perhaps so. Alrighty. So, um, today's topic is Reiki and um, Yoga for Trauma. And on our show today, our, our episode or what have you, we have Gail. I'll give you a brief introduction on Gail. Gail is a Air Force veteran, a Reiki master. She's been practicing yoga for over 40 years, and she's also a yoga teacher. Most recently, Gail has been teaching um, yoga to uh, veterans and also yoga to people that have uh, joint replacement and injury. Let's see, we have a comment here. Let's see who we Oh, you go, Gail. Mary Jo. Hey, Mary Jo. I'm going to bring it a little closer. To... Sorry, guys. Maybe. All right, so we're going to continue on here. If you guys think of any questions, go right ahead and just type them away, and we'll be happy to answer them. Gail, do you want to add anything um, about yourself that you want to share? I first discovered yoga back in my hippie days, well actually my pre-hippie days back in the 70s, and then didn't really take it for a while, but yes, it's been about 40 years I've been practicing yoga. That's a very long time, almost half a century, very long time. You make so, me sound old. <laughs> <laughs> no, that means you're very knowledgeable, experienced, um, yeah, it's probably our local guru, yes, she's awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna be like Tao Portia Lynch and still be teaching yoga when I'm 99. 99, yeah. Uh, we have she's in a magazine that we have, and I was talking to some people about her a couple weeks ago. So that's Gail right there, for sure. Okay, so continuing on. So um, tell us a little bit about Reiki. How long have you been a Reiki master? What led you to um, becoming certified in Reiki? So just share whatever you want to share. Well, Reiki is an ancient Japanese method of energy healing, and it's just helping move the energy through the body and then opening blockages that may be in various parts of your body. Like acupuncture or acupressure, the blockages are not always where the pain is located, where the difficulty is located. I've probably been a natural energy healer for a long time, and Four years ago, discovered Reiki, took a Reiki introduction to Reiki class. It happened to be at the right place at the right time. It had piqued my interest, and from then I was hooked, and then went on to become a level two, and then a Reiki master. I only got my Reiki master certification about a year ago, so I'm pretty new at master Reiki. Okay. Now, if anyone is interested in Reiki healing, Gail can definitely provide that for you. So you're welcome to um, put a comment down below and uh, Gail can be in contact with you about that, okay? Any questions on Reiki before we continue on this afternoon? Maybe not. Sometimes it takes a Always ask later, too. Exactly, we'll just have a follow up. So continuing on. Um, Gail, I guess we'll talk about uh, trauma, yoga for trauma. Go, just jump right in, whatever you want to tell us, how long you've been practicing, what led you to that, and so forth. I've been interested in helping children that are in difficult situations for much of my life. And I found a class to get certified in teaching children in trauma, and it's, out, it's actually out of Miami, Florida. It's called Yoga Gangsters. It's now called Yoga Co Coalition. Started as Yoga Gangsters. And it was started by a yoga master who herself was a child that grew up in an abusive home, was food scarce, etc. So she developed this program to help children in trauma. And we learned a lot about what might trigger them, um, things that they may be going through. So not all yoga poses do you want to do. You might want to be cautious with of music you play, uh, what kind of sense you have in the room. From there, I found a certification for veterans with yoga through the Yoga Warrior program. Mm -hmm. And I 
actually flew to Massachusetts from Georgia for a long weekend to become certified to teach veterans with PTSD. As a veteran myself, I find it so important to help the veterans that have been trauma, have been in trauma, and, and need to learn to work through some of this trauma. Again, caution with hoses, um, but a lot of breathing is involved. It's also helping them with a lot of self-awareness. I think you were telling, we had talked a couple weeks ago that in yoga, we often, we usually ask people to remove their socks and their shoes, but you were telling me that oftentimes with children, you don't ask them to remove the socks yes. and the shoes. You wanna share with well, why you would not want to do that? Children who've been in trauma, children who have been uh, homeless, have had to leave in the middle of the night that may have things that are very scarce, their possessions are all with them. So to take off your socks and shoes, to put them in an area where they may be out of sight can be very traumatizing mm -hmm. to these children. So they are allowed to keep their socks on, usually their shoes might be right at the front of the mat where they can keep an eye on them. Um, again, with children in trauma, and this gets very into the nitty gritty, there are certain poses like down dog you may not want them to do if a child has ever been molested mm -hmm. um, and you don't always know it i know it's hard to talk about but you yes. don't always know where these children have come from mm -hmm. uh, poses like shavasana like shavasana which so many of us love laying on our back mm -hmm. that can be a very dangerous pose again for a child who's been traumatized so i always invite them to lay down in any position that is comfortable mm -hmm and we don't talk about why something may or not may not be comfortable, but that they're welcome to lay in any pose they can. That's wonderful, it, thank it's you. It's hard to think about. It is, it, oh wow, the children, just trauma in general, but it just upsets me so. I know. I, you know, so they're such innocent beings and they just don't, no one deserves to be hurt, um, particularly the children, they're, they're so innocent. As mothers, it, it speaks to us. It does. And just so thankful to have someone like you that you. or other just kind, sweet spirits and souls that feel connected mm -hmm. and are able to touch lives and make a difference, particularly to those who have been affected by trauma. Well, if I can mention, anybody out there who works with children in trauma, this program through Yoga Coalition, and you can either contact me or you can just Google it, they offer free yoga to children that are in trauma. So if you work with children in trauma, mm -hmm. all the yoga classes will be free at whatever center you work at. And for veterans, Emory Center for Brain Health has a wonderful program for veterans. So if you are a veteran or you know a veteran who may have PTSD, who would like to, to go through this program, they can contact the Emory Center for Brain Health. Wonderful. And you're currently teaching classes yes. uh, at Emory, is that correct? Yes, I Can you share with us it. a little bit? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. It's a two-week program that veterans go in for two weeks, and they get a lot of alternative therapies, such as massage and acupuncture, yoga, et cetera, to help work through the trauma. And I'm glad to talk to you more about that and give you some contact and some information if you need it. Okay, I think we have a comment. Let's, can I, let's zoom in a moment. How does the energy in a person's body cause pain? I think they're going back to the, the Reiki. Reiki, yes. Oh. Okay, I think, do you mean how does the energy healing help with the pain? Is that what you mean? Let's see. If that's what the question, just to kind of clarify. Well, let me see if I can answer. Okay. So, We'll, see, we'll say you have um, pain in your low back. And through helping move the energy, you're helping your body heal itself in that. Now, I'm not saying that we're gonna heal a broken bone by any means, but that you can, the energy, your own body's energy can help flow through that area where there might be a compression, et cetera, and help that your body's energy will help open up and heal the areas that are traumatized. You know, your blood goes to certain areas, brings your red and white blood cells. Well, the energy, which can be known as chi, is invisible, unlike blood cells, that is visible. 
and that will help bring that energy and also help remove blockages if there's something blocked there energy-wise. Did that answer the question? I, I think it answered it for me, so let's make sure our listeners, our viewers understand. You get to a certain age and you can drop a decade in a heartbeat and not even know it. I, I, five years, may I think. Okay. Okay, Mary Jo said that makes sense in regard going back to the oh, first good. question. Okay, okay, good. Yes. Um, anything else? Is there anything specific that you have to include in yoga classes for people of trauma? I know that in regards to the children you mentioned, some poses not to, to, do it. to offer. Yes, anything oh. that you sometimes do include or well, in, in all my classes, I because I don't know where anybody's coming from, mm -hmm. and because I've been certified to teach uh, both children and adults in trauma, I always offer to my students that if anything doesn't work, if it doesn't feel right, just don't do it. Except when we're doing core work. Core work is supposed to not feel good. So we do that anyway. <laughs> but that if anything, and I don't ask questions as to why something may or may not feel good, but just uh, feel free to not do any pose. I like to show variations on each pose so that people can get that same stretch or that same um, benefit from it without, if something doesn't feel good, then okay. they can always try a different, different option. a different option to That's get great. that same. Does anyone have any questions on a yoga for trauma? While they're thinking, anything you want to add to before we transition to our next little segment? Well, um, I wanted to mention, so for people that have injuries, uh, again, I'm very cautious and I like to know what somebody's injuries are mm -hmm. so that I can know either what to not do if Almost all my class has a certain injury, we'll say has bad knees. There are certain poses we're just not going to do. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, maybe if one person does, and this applies to my veterans very much, then I, I will ask them at the beginning, I say, I hope you don't mind, but I may meet you out in class and say don't do a certain pose. The rest of us will do it, but I would rather you don't, just so you don't further injure your knee, your hip, your shoulder, whatever. So. I've never had anyone say, no, don't call me out on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as veterans, they are very much, I stick through the pain, I'm going to work through this, I'm going to go through it, and I have to tell them at the beginning, don't, don't work through the pain, don't go through the pain. If the pain, the pain's there for a reason, so stop. It's really hard for veterans. I can only imagine, I can only imagine. Well, we seem to have a question or a statement here. Mary Jo says, what kind of training did you get to teach those who have experienced trauma? So I think Mary Jo, she logged in a little bit late. Oh, if you want to do a quick. Sure, I've been, mm -hmm. I've been certified to teach children in trauma through something called Yoga Gangsters, which is now called Yoga Coalition, they rebranded. And then veterans, I went, I got a three day, I went to a three day class and was certified to teach veterans through Yoga Warrior program. Okay. Okay, uh, it says here, most children facing trauma are resistant to asking for help. How do you approach them? I'm only teaching yoga, so I'm not really helping per se. They're not 
if I'm teaching a child in trauma, they're not necessarily going to come to me for help, but more I've learned to recognize how a child who is in trauma may act out. They may be total attention seekers and the one that wants to disrupt because they are so starved for attention. Mm -hmm. Or they may be very resistant and stay in the back of the class and almost sullen and not participate. And in either way, I don't attend to them particularly. I, I don't, you know, I might ask the sullen child to try a pose, but if they are totally resistant, then maybe they just need to come to classes for a while before they warm up to it because something new is scary. Or the child that seeks attention, I perhaps may need to ask that child to help roll up the mats afterwards. I may point them out and say, would, would you mind being the one that helps me roll up mats? Because then that's giving that child special attention. That's great, that's really great. Alrighty, so if no one has any more questions, we'll transition to our next little topic, um, focusing on yoga for people that have had joint replacements and injuries. Gail talked a little bit about injuries already, but she teaches a special class for people that have knee replacements and hip replacements and so forth. So if you want to just dive in and, and just say whatever, can you go right sure. ahead? Well, a lot of that knowledge from that came out of my veterans, my training for veterans, because so many of them do have physical uh, limitations or have had injuries. Also, I have done some self-learning, I should say, through books and uh, online on people with mobility problems, such as in chairs, wheelchairs, etc. There is a whole class on chair yoga for seniors. So I've gone through that on my own, and not in a, not in a teacher certification setting. And through that I learned a lot of what should and shouldn't be done, can and can't be done, and how different poses may affect people. So. Again, I ask my students what works, what doesn't work, and tell them up front, don't do anything that doesn't work. Okay. I'm very cautious about hands-on with a class where people may have had injuries because I don't want to, again, re-injure anything. Understandable. Understandable. Okay, does anyone have any more questions or thoughts that you want to share this afternoon? In the meantime, um, uh, we will have Gail share with us maybe one or two of her favorite poses, why they're her favorite poses, and, we'll, and she'll demonstrate, okay? So, one of my favorite poses, because I did work in IT for a long time, my IT band, which has nothing to do with uh, computer programming, but I, I love that a lot of people who are in IT have really tight IT bands. So that's one of my favorite poses, is anything that opens that IT band. And I love to rock the baby. So this one is challenging, but you can start with your foot in your hand, and then your other arm cradling your knee, or perhaps your calf, and just rock your baby. And then as this one gets to be a little easier, maybe you move up a little bit to your wrist and pull in a little tighter till eventually you should be able to come all the way up, putting your foot in your elbow crease and really holding that shin up tight to your chest and then just rock back and forth. Now this is not for somebody, again, with knee injuries. It's probably gonna stress an artificial mm -hmm. knee or an artificial hip. But if you just have tight IT bands, this is a great little exercise. If you work in an office, not a cubicle, you can always do this there. Yes, that's right. I like to say this is a great one for doing, watching TV in the evening. If you're watching TV, just kind of sit there and rock your baby, and then rock your other baby. You've got twins, don't forget. <laughs> so you rock both your babies. Noticing that one baby may be tighter than the other baby, mm -hmm. and this will help those IT bands. Give you some relief there. Definitely. Yes. People that suffer from sciatica. Yes. Great pose to do. Okay. And is that the, the only one you want to share with us? Or do you have no, another? I, well, I have two other favorite poses. One is legs against the wall. Okay. And that's a great pose. Again, if you sit all day, if you've been on a long 
portraits, if you've been on an airplane, so much fluid collects in our ankles. Yes. So, mm -hmm. legs against the wall. And it is exactly what it seems like. You turn yourself sideways. Just lay down, feet up. Again, it's a great one. You can watch television in the evening as you rest, but then all the fluids will start to drain out of your ankles, out of your feet. It's a great if you've got edema. And they said if you've been in an airplane, if you have somebody with you that can, you've got tight Achilles, you can put a little weight. Yeah. A sandbag or something right there. Yeah. Lays it down. Give you a little relief there. Mm -hmm. relief. That'll help open your Achilles. Oh, that was that was a lovely pose, Gail. That's Thank what you. they said here. Okay. Can I show a third? Do yes, we we go. Yeah, third sure. Pose. So my third mm -hmm. favorite pose is a standing pose, and it is a core. Anyone that's taken from me, Mary Jo, you know. This is one of my favorites, Tadasana. Tadasana is just grounding your feet. You start by making sure your feet are lined up. It's amazing how much our feet are not lined up. Then close your eyes and tune in. Wobble to the front, wobble to the back. Start to notice if you stand on the balls of your feet or if you stand back on your heels. Mm -hmm. With your eyes closed, wobble left and right. Notice if you stand on one foot more than the other. Then comes the tricky one. Turn your feet in and then come out. Make sure that you're balanced. Start to check your alignment. Where are your shins? Where are your thighs? Are you holding tension in our hips? We hold a lot of tension. Make sure your chest is over your hips. Make sure your shoulders, it's not cold, we're in Georgia. We stand like this a lot. We wanna make sure our shoulders are down. We don't want to beetle Bailey, but we also don't want to curl our shoulders in like it's mm -hmm. cold. Just check your alignment, chin up a little bit. Gail, do you mind Mine's turning to the side for sure. just a moment? I can get a side view there. Okay, so we see crown is towards the sky, shoulders are down away, stacked above the hips. She's grounded, rooted down through her feet. And this is a great pose. I like to tell my students, this is a great pose when the world gets wobbly. You're rooting down to the earth. You can imagine that you've, you've got roots in your feet going down to the earth and the crown of your head is reaching the sky. And it's really connecting you. So when the world gets wobbly, and the world gets wobbly all the time. Yes, it does. You don't have to close your eyes, but you're in that checkout line, and the lady ahead of you has 92 things, and it says 10 or less, and <laughs> the children are crying, and whatever is going on. Just take a few minutes to breathe in Tadasana, yes. and sort of find your own center and your own power. And it makes the world a lot better place. I would have to agree. So those are my three favorite poses. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so we will come back to have a seat here. I guess I need to shift just slightly. Alrighty. So if anyone has any other questions, feel free to ask them now. I do want to thank Gail for joining us this afternoon for sharing about uh, Reiki, uh, yoga for trauma, and yoga for people with foot replacement, and also her three favorite poses. So if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to, if you're watching now or later, you can just write them in the comments, and uh, I'll make sure that Gail is aware. If I can answer them or she can answer them, we'll be happy to do so. If anyone would like more information on Reiki healing, definitely send Gail a message, and I'm sure she'll be glad to help you with that. Yes, she'll be glad to answer questions. We can talk about it. Also, it. any information that you guys may need on yoga for 
uh, veterans. What was the location at Emory one more time? Emory Center for Brain Health. Emory Center for Brain Health. And if you work with children and there may be children in trauma, um, then feel free to either contact me and I'll get you in, in hooked up with um, the people that, that do that with Yoga Coalition or you can just look up Yoga Coalition. Awesome. Let's see, we have one more comment. That was fantastic. Thank you, Gail, for sharing. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, well, thank you guys for joining in this afternoon. Um, let's see, things going on in the studio. Uh, we are now having classes six days a week, Monday through Thursday, Friday and Saturday. We had our yoga in the park yesterday. It was great. The next yoga in the park will be August the 11th at 8 a.m. at the Locust Grove City Park. Also, we are having candlelight restorative yoga the last Saturday in the month, July 28th at 6.30. So definitely try to sign up for that if you can. Um, let's see, I think that's about it that's coming up right now. We hope you guys can drop into the studio. Any questions that you have after today's Sunday sit down, feel free to ask. Hope that you all have a wonderful week. We'll bring our hands up at Heart Center allow grace to guide you and grace to keep you all. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you.